Okay, it's 9.03 right now. I think we should start. Uh, let me just uh, welcome everyone uh, to the, uh, the, the, the session, the talk session. If you realize, uh, there are two of us over here. There's Engineer Rosnida and myself, Engineer Raza. Um, and we are sharing the screen because uh, we are over in the UM right now, <laughs> unexpectedly, but we solved the problem. Uh, so what um, we ha will have today is a joint venture talk by um, Nur Zalina uh, Jamaluddin, who is the um, Vice President of Low Carbon Ventures. Um, from the Southeast Asia hibiscus. Um, it's very interesting. But before that, um, we would like to actually just uh, talk a little bit about the, uh, the, the talk session. This talk is a bit different. Uh, it is a joint venture between uh, oil and gas uh, and mining technical division as well as the women engineer session. Women engineer session, yep. yeah. So uh, this talk, uh, we call series of women in the oil and gas industry who are successful who are beautiful oh i should of this. course <laughs> <laughs> right Selina? Yeah. yes that's goes uh, without and, saying right uh, so, um, women in the oil and gas industry, because um, oil and gas industry, even though it has been there for like since uh, in Malaysia since 1972, but we are basically still uh, lack of uh, women engineers um, in 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 the oil and gas industry itself. Um, very few. Yes, very few. So, Ruslida uh, over here is uh, from civil engineering. And... Uh, yeah, I'm I'm attached with... Uh, I'm from civil engineering by background and I'm attached with Kuala Lumpur City Hall uh, in the engineering departments. And I, since I was the uh, chairman of the oil, gas, and mining technical division, so my major was uh, my major was uh, petroleum engineering, and I, from the background point of view, I'm a drilling engineering consultant. Uh, so, uh, so this is what we do. But um, you know, you have uh, probably attended some of my talks and whatnot. But today, our focus is Nur Zalina Jamaluddin, who basically will be talking about you know what makes you uh able to be successful um, this is not just for all the ladies out there but also for the men as well and this talk is actually very interesting uh you will be able to see the poll it's very interactive and i hope all of you out there will be joining in on all of the activities um, stay until the end because we will have session where we will be uh, you know chatting with uh, nurzalina as well as um, you know, uh, getting to know you as well, how you yeah. have learned from the session. So we, um, I, I wouldn't want to um, introduce so much of Nozalina. I will let her to do that. But you can see her on the screen right now, and everyone is like, "Allah, shut up, Raza. Let her talk." Okay, we will do exactly that. Thank you. Go ahead, okay. Zalina. Thank you, Raza and uh, <laughs> Rusnida. And uh, I just wanted to say that, Raza, you can continue on for the next two hours, no problem. <laughs> that makes my life easier. But uh, good morning, everyone. It's such a pleasure uh, for me to be here on Saturday morning after such a really, really hectic week. So uh, I really appreciate IEM and uh, the sections to you know for inviting me. Uh, it's, a, it's an honor. And at the same time, I thought that you know for you all to show up on Saturday morning at 9 a.m., you all should give yourself a big of applause. So today I'm going to talk about, um, yeah, so I'll share um, a little bit of um, you know, the way how we're going to structure this. Let me share the screen first. Okay. All right, so the, the topic is about navigating a career as engineering professionals, right? And, and all of us here are engineers, myself included. But for me, I have I would I will share later that I've actually departed from the engineering professional for some time, and then now coming back as in in management. 
Uh, and but there are some things that I've observed. Uh, either you want to keep uh, in the technical ladder, or even if you want to go to business or management or other even entrepreneurship, right? So, how can we improve uh, our chance of success? So that's the title of today. And really, I look forward to interactions, uh, feedback, and also your own stories because I think that's where we learn together. So that's that's the start of it. All right, so let's see. How we're going to do this is it's going to be about 30 minutes of um, talks. Uh, there, are a few, there will be a few reflections. Uh, let me just make a disclaimer now so that whoever feels uncomfortable uh, know that it will get uncomfortable at some point because I will ask a uh, few hard questions, not really for me, but it's actually for, you, for yourself. So there will be a few questions that um, we will look at uh, and we'll see how we can navigate that. But essentially, the outline is going to be a quick introduction. Now, what's the, setting the context, what, where we are now and where do we go from here? And then the rest of the time, we'll have uh, dialogues. Uh, Ayah Raza and I, um, Rushnida can facilitate that dialogue and we look forward to have a lot of participation in this session, okay? All right, so let's start with simple things. Uh, I'm very curious to know where everyone comes from. So let's start with the polling, Suryani, a uh, year of experience in engineering. We have launched. Okay, let's uh, put in, I see, wow. I see all of that, that first question. Uh, you you are able to see uh Zalina as well the the yes. result that I'm seeing right now. Yep. Okay. We yeah. do have seventeen year uh, seventeen percent of the people, um um less than five years and five to ten years is twenty five percent and ten to fifteen years is ten percent and more than fifteen years is about fifty percent. Oh, Great. So there, there's quite a, a, a number of mature <laughs> mature engineers, engineers over here. Um, and some of them as well, probably, you know, even though they are matured in their, um, the, in the, uh, you know, in, in terms of experience, but they probably have just started their industry. Uh, so probably, you know, that, that's uh, why they also join over here. Oh, uh, we also have, a, a, you know, 14% uh, for the five less than five years, five to 10%, 24%. Uh, 24 percent five to ten years uh, 10 to 15 years is 14 uh, percent and 48 percent so that's uh, the majority of yes. the more than 15 years okay we still have a lot more who didn't answer so please guys and out there please uh vote your working experience thank you we have 51% who participated. <laughs> what happened to the rest of the <laughs> the rest of the participants? We have 45 participants right now. Uh so actually we, we can't vote. Yeah. Yeah. Because uh we're I, I want included. We are not included. We can we, we, we don't have that uh <laughs> that button to vote. So anyway, you, uh, you can uh, add. just a quick one. Can uh the participants see the result? Um, um, I don't think so. What we maybe can maybe Suryani can uh, flash up yeah. once it's done. Lah. Maybe once we get about seventy percent, no problem. That's a good representative sample size. Yes, yes. Okay. Okay. More than fifty. Wow. More yeah. than fifteen. Wow. More than fifty percent. More than fifteen years. Yeah. Don't worry. I, 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 at 15 years, I had a crossroad, so I'll share later. <laughs> I, I hope that after my talk, no one like goes out to another industry, but that's what happened. <laughs> no, actually, it, it could be um, um, the same industry, but different kind of roles. Mm. The, of the same in the, I mean, in a different industry, but in the similar role, you know, sometimes yep. uh, because I, I, if you realize, for us engineers, we just need to have an open mind oh, because, sure. you know, whatever learning that we have as an engineer, it basically 
are applicable everywhere and anywhere that you go. That that's what I realized, as well as that's what Sembang Chilex in the previous uh, episode, uh, which is available in on the YouTube. If you all would like to see Sembang Chilex episode six, it's about Dulu Saya Engineer, where we talk about people who change their career to chase their um, passion in life. Oh, okay. Okay. Let's see. I think now we, we can have... close. Yeah, yeah, I think we can close the the poll. Okay. Yep. Share result. Oh, we can share result. Let's share the result. Ah, okay. So any anyone can so see the results. So everyone right? can see the results of the poll. Um. So at the end of the poll, we do have um more than um uh, forty eight percent of the participants are more than fifteen mm -hmm. years. Uh, 22, 21% uh, between 10 to 15 years, 18% 5 to 10 years, and 12% uh, less than 10, uh, less, less than 5 years. Usually, this kind of talk, I can say that um, a lot more people with less than 5 years. However, this weekend, this week is a very, very um, busy week for IEM because we do have an open day which is happening right now at the University of Malaya. So if you are in a, in a, around this area, come and join us over in the University of Malaya. So um, back to you, uh, Zalina. Okay, thank you, Raza. Uh, and I think this is, thanks for doing the poll. I think that was good in terms of uh, knowing your profile and the distribution. Uh, now let's look at the industry very quickly. I think this one we can just do you know one minute's time lah. Hopefully, all right. One to go, Suryani. Ada satu lagi. Ah, wow. Ada. Okay. Okay, two percent, three percent. Okay, let's uh, let's. Uh, uh, if you all wonder uh, how to do the poll, if you see at the bottom of your um, line over there, there's a, a poll. So you click over there, and then you can uh, start. Um, you know, uh, taking your vote. Yeah. So we have fifty two percent participated. Oh, we do have almost 20% of others. Okay, what kind of others? Yeah. I mean, IT, aerospace, chemical, civil. Civil, all that. Uh, probably, um, you know, um, well, it I'm could wondering. be biomedical. Okay. Because, can, um, uh, the, the, in the biomedical we, we are actually in the biomedical faculty of University of Malaya. So that probably answers the other spot. <laughs> yeah. and, and for those who answered others, you can also type on the chat box later. Just I'm curious lah, to see who these others are, uh, what are the other uh, industries. So. Yeah. Okay, for the okay. others who voted others, please put in the chat box what exactly is your engineering industry is hmm. uh, about so that we uh, understand and know. And then uh, probably our talk and our chit chat over here can focus a little bit on you. Yeah, we want to include everyone in our conversation. Oh, we have querying. Oh, wow. Uh, oh, querying. Okay. Is Very diverse. The, Mining, okay. uh, mining, mining yeah. yeah, which is ah, under OGMPD. Yes. Okay, so how many percentage right. do we have now? I think about 73%. So that's what? good. So we got 42%. Eh? Okay, sorry, end poll first. I, I don't think the participants can see this yet. Ah, let's share okay. the results. Okay, so you all can share the, can see the results right now. All and guess. 42%, of course, because this is OGMTD. <laughs> and also we have women's <laughs> intersection. We cannot see. Is that yeah, okay. okay, no all right. Problem. So we have mechanical 5%, electrical 11%, uh, so civil and structural. Uh, 15%. Yeah, and, yeah, and chemical, chemical about 5%, 5%. And others, others just now, how many Just percent? now, others. Uh, finally. Others it, is 16%. And marine as well, 3%. Yep. So, okay. Yeah. But... Oh. Um, most of this actually, you know, like uh, electrical, mechanical, they can be in the oil and gas industry as well. Yeah. yeah. And, all okay. right. All right. All right. Back to you, Zaina. I'm going to mute myself. Thank you. All right. Thank you, guys. Uh, and I think that was a very lively uh, introduction that I have never imagined. But 
thanks for participating. So, okay, so let's just do a very, very quick um, uh, sharing on where I was so that it can give you a context of, um, of this talk. Um, I am now the uh, VP of Low Carbon Venture for the Hibiscus Group. And previously, and it's only a month, uh, previously I was the COO for C Hibiscus. Um, Hibiscus Petroleum is an oil and gas ENT company. Uh, and, but before that, I was in uh, Asia School of Business as the Chief Business Development Officer. And this is what I meant by uh, after 15 years, um, I detoured out from engineering and oil and gas to chase my dream, got myself certified as a coach and done with it, and now back in oil and gas. Um, and before that, also, uh, before the uh, Asia School of Business, it's, uh, it's oil and gas through and through, uh, but in various different roles, uh, Talisman as commercial advisor and MPRC as, uh, if you remember, for some of you, during the EPP days, uh, during the uh, Najib Razak's administration, uh, we had uh, Pemandu, and that was part of the uh, thing, national service, I would say, uh, but I spent a lot of, a long time in ExxonMobil. That's where I think I met I.R. Raza here, uh, back in KL and Kerte. So uh, quite diverse experience, I would say, just because I probably was, I was exploring and I'm still exploring, I would say, as life is a journey. So, so I just want to share that is my career, but I started as a facilities engineer. I'm a chemical engineer. Uh, from Cornell, and uh, that has been one of the, I would say, the foundation, the core of what I do. I, I like a lot of, you know, problem solving, a lot of process type of work. So process can be process, chemical process, but process can also be business process. So that's that's where uh, my passion lies. All right, so uh, enough about me. I hope that gives a quick context of um, my experience and all right so let's start with why why i chose this topic so when i was asked this to talk uh, uh, uh in this session i thought okay you know i am not going to share technical things because uh, a lot of people can do much better job than me but i wanted to bring the attention to how do we actually navigate in an uncertain future because we all know that the future is getting more and more uncertain. It changes every, you know, every so often. Uh, and this is a, a snapshot of what the World Economic Forum shows in the, uh, the recent global risk report. So you can see here, uh, there are many, many different risks uh, that's going to show up in the next 10 years, right? I mean, we are at this intersection of uh, AI of um, explosion of um, you know, robots, explosion of climate change. So you can see the trends there are largely around that. Uh, and of course, at the back of uh, geopolitical issues. So that, that's, that's really what is facing us in the future. Okay. Uh, if you want to read the report, you can take a look at uh, World Economic Forum Glo uh, Global Risk Report 2023. So on that backdrop, where do we go from here as engineers? And I, I wanted to bring just some of the opportunities here. I always like to frame it as opportunities in crisis because while, you know, uh, there's so many uncertainties in the future, but what can we prepare ourselves? Uh, and, you know, we all talk about purpose. We all talk about meaningful impact to society as engineers. Uh, the other day, I actually heard um, somebody quoted saying that engineers are the gift to society. And I, I kind of smile at that quote. And I said, oh, I never thought about it that way, but maybe true. What is it? Because we, we present solutions to the societal problems, right? So you see here, there are many different types of opportunities. Uh, arising from those uh, future risks, uh, digitalization, artificial intelligence. Uh, I'm personally am very, very passionate in energy transition. Um, and how do you better off deploying technology to, I would say, clean up the mess where we are in now? 
um, climate adaptation. Uh, Malaysia hasn't really gone in this space, but we need to think about it more and more, adaptation and mitigation. Health tech, you talk about the biomedical. Uh, just a quick, interesting fact. Uh, when I was in Cornell, I actually did chemical engineering with uh, research in genetic engineering. So when, you know, at that time, when the um, uh, it was still not known uh, how you do mRNA and all the splicing and whatnot, I already did that. And to know that in COVID, during COVID-19 pandemic, that was the technology that were used to solve the, uh, the world's problem. Uh, so whoever in uh, health tech, biomedical, there is a space for you. And also for construction, right? Sustainable businesses. Uh, how do you build uh, structures more sustainably, uh, green building? And of course, for those who want to venture into finance and green financing, and look, a lot of things. In short, there are a lot of opportunities out there arising from this. Okay. All right, so enough of the gloom and doom, but also opportunities, right? So what, what um, can we do as an engineer? So I here I actually like this. This is not a new model uh, in terms of learning, in terms of personal development and professional development. It's an old model, but sometimes, you know, good, uh, old model is as good as new. So this is called the T-shaped model. Uh, the reason why it's called T-shaped is because T is a cross-discipline, it's a breadth, right? And then the, uh, the, the pillar is where your deep discipline expertise is. So, for example, um, the skills for the future, we talk about the cross-discipline expertise, the meta-learning. So what's meta-learning? Meta-learning is learning how to learn things change all the time, new things come, keep coming up, and we all have to keep up with that. So learning how to learn, to me personally, has been my single biggest asset. Because when you navigate from one industry to another, one role to another, you have to, to quickly adapt and adopt. And uh, of course, we engineers, I love to put this problem solving right, front, left, center, because we are all engineers. And this is one thing that I would say is the transferable skill as we all navigate. Even if you go out of uh, the industry or other places, this is the asset that we all have um, for the future. Uh, systems thinking, I specifically put systems thinking. Uh, MIT is very good at this. And systems thinking really is about how do you then, okay, for some of chemical engineers out there, just take it as systems dynamics, right? So how the um, uh, the different parameters or how the different inputs will affect the outputs, and how the you know these are these variables yeah, interconnected with each other, and this is super super important, especially when we are trying to solve uh, global uh, complex issues like climate change. Soft skills, there's nothing soft about soft skills, uh, really about people. But I have to say, when I was an engineer, I became an engineer because I don't want to deal with people. Surprise, surprise. As an engineer, we have to deal with people. And this is actually the hardest, but the, the most valuable thing to have. Because we all have to work together in a, in a group, in projects. So that's the cross-discipline expertise. And the deep discipline expertise can be, once you have that, it's very, very important to have foundation, right? Uh, it can be anything. It can be oil and gas. It can be um, construction. It can be sustainable construction. It can be energy transition, whatever that is. But there has to be a deep discipline expertise that we all have um, to be, I would say, uh, marketable, especially in the future. I put here very specific, uh, just a few things, data analytics. Is because it's a buzzword, but you know, at least we all need to have some statistics um, understanding and uh, data analysis and industry specific. So that is that um, on the skills of the future. And what I like to share a bit more, um, more on how do we then use this, right? How do you then navigate this type of, um, you know, career or how do you, 
actually position yourself as we want to progress our career? How do we progress ourselves? Um, this is where I want to share a bit more. This is not in, on anyone. This is just my own reflection from uh, 20 odd years uh, when I navigate a little bit, you know, unknown territory, I would say, navigating one's career. We, there are three things that um, I would like to share. And actually, after this, after this, I will stop talking and actually I want to do a, a bit of reflection, if that's okay with you. So the first thing is foundation. We all know, right? Whenever we need to do something strong, we need to have solid foundation. What is that solid foundation? The non-negotiables. What does that mean? What are the non-negotiables? You talk about values. Uh, what's your view on work-life integration? What's your view on priorities? Um, it's important because as we decide which pathway to go, it, this will be your North Star. For me, this has been my North Star. Whenever I evaluate options, evaluate roles, uh, most times, uh, if some of you are lucky, you will be presented with multiple options, which is a good problem. Uh, some people don't might not have the option, but it's also a, it's, it's a good problem because then you will be um, clarifying more on your values and what matters to you. Okay, so that's non-negotiable. We'll, we'll get to do that the next, uh, we'll take about 10 minutes after this. And then the second one is establish baseline. Uh, baseline means we know where we are, where do we stand today? And, and in terms of navigating career uh, for the future, it's very, very important to be honest about where we stand. Uh, there's no point of pretending that uh, we think we know everything. Uh, for me, I am very clear where I can um, contribute and where I'm not good at. So this is a very, very important exercise to have. But the last one is the most interesting one. And I will also do a, um, a guided meditation or guided visualization. I'm not going to call it meditation. Everyone's going to freak out after this. Raza, suddenly, I know Raza run away already. But I will. <laughs> I, I know my meditation. However, uh, I think meditation um, can be <laughs> sensitive. Uh, I totally understand you. Go, go ahead. <laughs> so I will do a guided visualization because. And it's going to be a very, very simple one. I'm not going to do the 10, uh, I'm not going to do the 15, 30 minutes one, but just to help you facilitate to see yourself in the next five, 10 years and what do you want to feel at this point. Okay, so uh, we will share this deck, right, later. So don't worry about taking too many notes. Uh, what's important is you are all in it, participating in the reflection, okay? All right. So let's take, um, see, if I don't ask these questions now, then we're all going to come back and do nothing. So I'm going to pause and we're all going to give everyone a space for about five minutes. I know five minutes is very, very short, but you know, I want to give you all a, a teaser, a taster of what reflection can be. Um, so let's, let's, if, any one of you, uh, uh, you know, have pen and pencil and um, are willing to play this, um, you know, they're doing this exercise. Let's do that. We. I think this exercise is a very powerful method um, that many, um, you know, great speakers actually make use of um, uh, for the benefit of um, our participants over here. So if you just would like to see how it is done, uh, how it is like, how does it feel, it's very, very effective. So let's do it together. Okay. All right. So what are my values? Okay. So some people will ask, what are my values? What does that mean? Values means that what do I feel really, really strong about? And if you ask the other way around, what really makes you angry if you don't have it? For example, let me share my values, okay? My values is, number one, is excellent. I have to be doing the best I can at everything I do. I mean, sometimes you have to also be wary of that because that might be going into the 
other extreme. So values are important for us, right? Excellence for me. Balance is very important for me. That means that I look at things in totality and balancing all the different pros and cons and different views. It can be balanced in the way how I approach work. It can be balanced in how I approach life. So I'm not a workaholic. Uh, I was telling I Raza and that just now I actually came back from walking this morning. So balance. Um, beauty. I'm an artist at heart, so I paint. And I like to do a lot of, uh, you know, anything beauty. So think about your values. Anything, at least one or two. It doesn't have to be all. It's uh, something that rings true to you. And okay, let me stop there for a while and so that people can just um, have that space. I wish I have a uh, music to play, but <laughs> I don't know. Okay. Um, all right, that's a sample of just a reflection. Why is it important? Maybe we'll do that after after this line. Yeah? Why what why it's important? And I can share a real life uh, example why these non-negotiables are important. Uh, what are my priorities? Example for my priorities would be um, I put my family first. For example, for me as a mother, I put my family first. Um, or it can be it's okay that I juggle between work and my role as a mother, in my case, when I know that I can delegate, things like that. So, so we, what our priorities can be different for everybody. It's just that at this point of your life, you want to know what your priorities are. So some people can be, oh, I actually want to finish my study. Uh, I want to finish my professional certification at this phase of my life, at this point of my life. Or it can be, I want to give back to society at this point of my life. So whatever it is, it will revolve around it. Or it can be, I want to raise a family. Or it can be, I actually want to excel in my job. I want to get that uh, next promotion. That's also your priority. They're very important because that will help you when the opportunity arises or when crisis happens, you know what are important and what are not important. So 2080 rule, yeah? Okay, uh, this one, I get the last one. I have to put it here because everyone keep asking me about work-life balance. I said, look, you guys, work-life balance. I would shift it, reframe it as work-life integration because there's no such thing as balance all the time. Uh, even though my um, value is balance, but, you know, we're just trying to fit it at the, that context. So... It can be, uh, you know, some people might feel that I need to work some hours only or I want to do a bit more uh, outside or I really want to go. This ties back to the priorities. Okay, so so it's important that you see that it's clear and this, there's no right or wrong answer on this one. Okay, this is a very, very, very powerful question. Uh, it's actually a coaching question. When I was asked about this uh, in my first coaching session, I thought, what on earth is this? My mind drew blank. But this is an invitation for all of you to take, do this for yourself. Uh, this is a gift because if you can't get the answer now, no problem. Uh, we'll get these questions. And this is planting the seed for you to find out more about yourself, what's important to you in life. Okay. Now, let's switch back to the engineer analytical mind, current baseline. Where am I now? Let's be honest. Where am I now? Am I happy? So if there's a meter, right? Zero to 10. Are you happy? Where are you today? 10 being very, very, very happy. Very, very satisfied. Okay, like zero, you know what means. Lah. Actually, Zarina, we, we are talking right now. I said that I'm happy with my life. And then Rusida said, no, she's not happy with her life. I, so I'm waiting, <laughs> I'm waiting to get more and more. 
she wants more. I yeah. kind of like have arrived to the stage. Uh, by the way, both of us are the, the, the same batch. <laughs> so, but but, uh, but but I have come to the stage in my life at which um, I just wanted to do things that I'm happy about. And um, Alhamdulillah, I can afford to do that. Um, there are some people who cannot afford to do that. What do, what, what do you think about that, Zaina? Okay. So, what I've learned here, I've gone through quite a lot of things in the past 10 years. Um, and there are times when it's like really, really low, and when times are really high, right? But now I've learned that the word is equanim equanimity. Equanimity. E Q U A. Sorry, I'm not a good spelling. N I M I T Y. So what that means is that the feeling of kind of just at peace, right? Um, you're like not, but just, and it's not linear. Both Life sides coming out. to equilibrium. <laughs> okay, like, good. You're speaking the, the engineering. <laughs> so, I don't, personally, I don't want to wait until I get um, to the point I want to be happy where I am now. I've learned that. Um, I've learned to make use of that. So, so I think uh, that is, oh, there's a book that actually, uh, Happy for No Reason by Gretchen Rubin. Happy for No Reason. She actually has a very, very good exercise. Go read. I, I, I'm not good at uh, doing that specific topic, Raza. So, but actually, I've done her exercises. I, I'm glad you raised this because I think uh, uh, books about happiness, uh, there's always one uh, for each one individually we have a book that basically tells us about happiness mine was being happy by andrew matthews that oh, book actually I'm changed my that. life oh. being it, happy, it just, yeah? yes being happy andrew matthews so that you know it, it just changed the perspective that i have um, and this is me right now after reading that book good, uh, good, good, good. 20 years ago probably oh. yeah Nice. See, I learned something today. I know I will always learn something from everyone. Okay, good. So, um, what are my strengths? This one is very, very important. And uh, usually I ask some of my mentees to imagine rather than sometimes we are so humble about ourselves, we don't know what our strengths are. So, I would turn the question to the time I feel I'm strong or the time I feel um, invincible to so reflect on the moment that you feel so good about yourself or reflect the time that you feel so invincible like, yes I I got it and you uncover that and be still that's your strength okay more to this lah as what I uh, these are very direct um, engineering analytical question but there are many ways to skin the cat uh, these are different questions that you can uncover your strength or maybe you already know which is good Okay, and then the last one, uh, what are my transferable skill sets? I already gave some of the uh, preview before. If you remember the T-shape, right? Um, most the transferable skill sets are the one at the top, the uh, cut across the industries. This is useful, especially when uh, we want to go into another role. Uh, for me, my transferable skill set is uh, my connections because I made a lot of connections over the years. Uh, in fact, some of the people know me as the super connector. So uh, that's one. And then like one really, I my transfer skill set is more on the talent development. Surprisingly, right? It's not, it's not technical, but that's just who I am. <laughs> okay. All right. I think I think it's good that uh, people actually find uh, you know actually you have to search for it you have to ask this question in order to find what is the greatest thing that you have and yeah. once you find that I think you will uh, feel at peace with your life and you know what you how you can contribute uh, to the society yeah I, yeah I love that the fact that you said that you know how you can contribute to the society right at the end of the day, how do you know you fit in that and be really good Thomas, Thomas the train, be good tank engine. 
I have to say that I have to throw that because my son loved Thomas Train when he was small. So be a good train, right? So uh, I okay. Let me just pause here. I'm so curious if any one of you who are bold enough to share some of this your answers here. Maybe Raza, do you want to do that or? You probably you can uh, put inside your chat or you can on your mic for a while and uh, speak if you would like to do that because this session over here is actually for you. Um, how you can see the potential in your life, how you can, you know, foresee yourself, whether you want to be in the oil and gas industry or you don't want to be in the oil and gas industry, whether you want to be in in, in engineering in, in engineering or not. You know, this is how this is a groundbreaking thing for you, for some of you who has not gone through this process at all. Okay, go ahead. Anyone would like to share? Yeah, please, you can unmute yourself or... How about, Rusnida, you share first. But because I see that Rusnida has actually put together a chart. <laughs> oh, <laughs> you know, when, when, when you were talking, she was putting together a chart. You know, <laughs> if you can wow. a chart about, you know, but, uh, this is Rusnida that I know. Uh, my okay. IEM sister. <laughs> so <laughs> we, we we are very close to each other. We are the uh, IEM sisters. So basically, let, let, let's talk about what, what, what you think, Rusinda. Okay, uh, I, I can share a few of mine uh, uh, for what are my values. Uh, what lah? <laughs> <laughs> this is Iceland. No, you go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I, I think my value is I'm... No, no, no. I don't want to talk about that one. I want to talk about my strength. Okay. Yes, I think you can do that. I just, just pick. Yeah. yeah very, just pick what you like. To, to yeah. Share. My strength. I'm very determined. I, I can say that I'm a hard working. Uh, so I, I know I set the goal. So I know what is my priority. If I want to do I if I want to get that, I will make sure I will get that. I will achieve that. Although sometimes maybe it's not up to my expectation, but at least I try. Ah, uh, so I love good. try, and I, I think I'm a risk taker. Also, I'm a very risk taker. I just jump. And, <laughs> and, and and actually, um, um, Rusnida's career move was actually a sad story, but you can see that in the Sabang Chillax episode one, where she talks about her career move. Um, you know, yes. she did not start as an <laughs> engineer. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, uh, but let's put it over there. Yeah. We have okay. one participant, uh, Miss Aisha, over here. Uh, well be done. One of uh, her values is honesty. Oh, and okay. I know Miss Aisha over here from OGMTD. Um, oh. You know, she's uh, one of the people who talks um, moderator during the SMRG Lex as well. Oh. So, yeah. Um, Thanks for sharing that, Aisha. Thank you, uh, Thank Aisha. You about others, anyone willing to talk, you can unmute yourself. You can unmute yourself or you can write in the chat box. Yeah, I'm, I'm curious about strength, actually. So let's talk about strength and how do you see yourself, um, you know. Did you find anything interesting in that question when I said, think about your, uh, a moment where you feel invincible and you feel strong? Yeah, actually, I always feel like I'm um, the wallpaper most of the time, but um, wallpaper. but, but I, yeah. I, I, you know, wallpaper where people don't actually know that you are you exist in a room, right? okay. <laughs> So yeah, uh, but I guess um, at some point in your life, and I hope everyone uh, find that tipping point in their life to actually, you know be the best that you can be and uh, happiness that's that's the reason why for me the value in my life is happiness you know i always mm. want to be happy at any point in time you know uh, and my priorities is the happiness in my life not anyone else's <laughs> yeah 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 <laughs> If I'm happy to be friends with you, then I'm happy to be friends with you. If I'm not happy to be friends with you, then I'll be avoiding you. <laughs> <laughs> so clearly, uh, I think people might be a bit shy on this one. No problem, no pressure. Kita buat the next one, okay? Okay, go ahead. 
All right. So this one is where the guided visualization that I want to have. So maybe we do a, a very quick one. Um, if you are all, okay, those, just now there was somebody who was driving, right, Eric? <laughs> uh, for those who are driving, don't, don't do this. Lah, okay. But for you all who are there at home comfortably, I think we do a, a quick um, five minute maybe. Uh, Oh, we have, um, oh, we Suraya also sh uh, uh, what name? shared her strength is ah. um, technical and IT savvy, oh. uh, PR skills and entrepreneurial uh, basic skills. Oh my God, these are really, really great strengths. And I can say that as an engineer, you basically would want to have the technical and IT savvy because that's the way on how we want to go with it uh, right now. Yeah, it's um, an added value to us now. Exactly, yeah. exactly. Rosalina, you have uh, any comments on that? No, I think I I, I know Mazia. So thanks, Sherry, for sharing that, Mazia. Ah, and I think that's okay. get, that's um, and you know you you always learn something about someone, even though if you know somebody for <laughs> quite some time. So thanks for sharing that, Mazia. Um. And oh. one one thing, if I may add, can Rosalina, don't afraid to imagine or think yourself doing anything else than being an engineer uh, because, you know, you can be anything that you want to be. As, you know, an engineering education has taught you all the necessary skills and knowledge to, 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 to pursue whatever that you love to do. Okay, go ahead, yep. Zaria. Okay, so now let's switch to a more creative um, exercise because just now it was very straightforward. Okay, so let's be prepared with something artistic and creative. So I just put that all these colors here. Um, if you are ready, let's do a quick guided visualization. Uh, I would suggest that we close our eyes because then there's no distraction whatsoever. All right, so uh, let's just sit comfortably. Okay. And take a deep breath. And as you take your, your breath, give yourself a huge smile. Imagine that you're just getting an, into an exciting exercise. Because you're going to meet your future. All right, take another deep breath. And just feel the chair that you're sitting on. And just relax your whole body. Okay. And now, imagine you are entering that future world. You see a door in front of you, and that door is a peak to your next future five years, next five years, next 10 years, whatever that is right for you. You open the door, you enter. As you step into that future, you look around. What do you see? This is your future. Who are with you? A 
And then you walk around. And what do these people say to you? And just take that moment. to pause, and to take note. And as you walk, you see your future self. May you give um, your future self a hug. May you are friends, actually best, best friends. You feel so much gratitude for having this opportunity. And you can ask your future self one question that you really, really want to know. What does he or she tell you? And as you do that, you feel very, very grateful for this encounter. And you ask one last question. What can I do more of today to get here? And you ask another question. What do I need what do I need to let go today to be here? And as you hear, or you feel, or you even see the answer, or it might just be a gesture, whatever that you see or feel now, you receive that with an open heart. You give your future self a big, big hug and embrace. And you know that you can always come back here whenever you need, okay? And you look around and you take that moment to feel, to feel the environment, to feel, and to just soak in the emotions. And to also soak in that newfound joy of gifts from your future self. And take a deep breath. And as you just bask in all the light and all the happiness in this brief moment, you walk back to the door where you came from. Say thank you to everyone around you. And you step out from that portal. And take another deep breath whenever you're ready. And come back to the room. Ah, Okay. That was a powerful session. I actually can see myself. Yeah. Well done. Good student, you all. And tanya student lain Okay, let's uh, let's hear from other people as well. 
um, we do have uh, Mr. Choi over here who basically shared uh, his value is uh, being caring Aww, and nice. his priority is about uh, per uh, having a permanent job and financial stability and I think that is very very important his happiness somehow is uh, 5 over 10 and his strength is go deep into certain knowledge uh, when interested actually my weakness also because I guess he spent too much time on getting into that certain knowledge which probably doesn't um, translate into financial stability probably that's the, the issue over there transferable skill contract knowledge so that is um, great sharing uh, Chui, thank you, you mr chui hey, actually uh, I, I have one one thing to add in that um that was actually a great reflection that you put there as uh, your strength uh, and can be weakness also that is so on point because sometimes when you overdo um, our strength, right, it can be our weakness. So be very, very aware of that so that we, uh, we can always use that strength for good instead of against us. Thanks, thanks, Mr. Tui, for sharing. Yeah, it uh, certainly is true. I totally agree with you, uh, Zalina, because sometimes our strength, we thought it, it is our strength. Uh, if we... Because everything has to be in moderation to me. Mm. Uh, because if you just gung ho and do that, um, you probably will be stepping on other people's feet and so on and so forth. You know, so yeah, uh, strength can also be your weakness. Thank you. All right. So anyone um wants to share your aha moment from the future visualization. Visualization is a very, very powerful tool, uh, you know, to, to, to bring success in your life. And uh, if you all have wanted to share uh, some of this um, experience of, of what you think about that method, or do, do you think that method is effective on you? To me, it is because uh, visualization is so important. You need to visualize yourself at a certain stage in life. Only then you will be able to work on it. And I totally, totally um, you know, agree that th this is the best method there is for success, uh, whether in your career, in your life, or whatnot. Yeah. Back to you, Zanya. Okay, I'm 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 waiting for one um, brave soul to share. <laughs> Anything that you're comfortable to share? Because I think this is where we learn, right? We uh, learn from each other. Anyone? And and don't, you know, the thing what I like about sharing is sometimes what you share, what comes to you is actually also a gift to others and they also actually find it useful. So anyone from the group wants to share? One um, aha moment. Or you can also be on the chat group, no problem. Yes, it, you can use the chat. You can open up your mic. If you suddenly you try to open up your mic, it is not able to be unmuted. You tell me so I can unmute your, yourself, um, your, your, um, you all. Uh, but you do share because, um, okay, but it, you, we are listening to, um, you know, a talk by um, Zalina over here, who basically is a vice president of, of for those who didn't come from from uh, the start just now, yeah. Um, Zalina over here is uh, a the vice president of the low carbon ventures of the Hibiscus Group, yeah. Um, uh, an operator. Um, so um, do share your. Excuse me. Uh, do share your um your experience with her because this is how we want to be successful in our career for those of you who are still searching excuse me uh searching for that you know uh ultimate life goal this is uh the place where you want to learn how to do it go ahead um, Probably face to face would be more, um, you know. Uh, if, that's why. That's why I thought. Kalau the breakout session, uh, will be good lah. You can share, kan? But that's okay. 
Um, ah, ya, ya, ada satu. Not yes. allowed to unmute ah. Oh, not allowed to unmute. Oh my god, so Masuk sorry. Lah semua orang tak boleh cakap. Oh, you are not allowed to unmute. Let Maybe me see. Um, uh, let me see hands. where I, I can unmute. Ah, yeah. uh, uh, yang ni I kena bagi technical kat you lah, Razak. <laughs> <laughs> let me see where Mr. Chui is. <laughs> um, Secretariat boleh tolong unmute. Kak Su, tolong um, unmute Mr. Choi. Hi. Aha, Choi. Uh, in the meantime, Mr. Choi, you hold on to your horses. Uh, <laughs> let Let me go through with Mr. <laughs> Amrit Singh over here who basically mentioned about values again, uh, career growth and job satisfaction. And he has also the priority. Okay, uh, he mentioned about priority of the family first, work and financial stability or oh, in that order. Okay, family first. Okay, I read that correctly. I, I, <laughs> yes, and I think it is very, very important that yeah. he actually uh, put that priority mm -hmm. because um, like for example, to me, my priority is myself. <laughs> okay. I want to make sure that I'm happy first, only that the rest of the people can be happy after me. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, go ahead, go okay. Ahead. okay, so Mr. Amrit say that uh, his happiness is 6 over 10. I appreciate and grateful of what I have now. Okay, good. The, uh, his strength is communication skills and negotiations. Wow, okay. Just, uh, okay, he have a question. Uh, Zalina, is it hmm. possible changing jobs from different industry despite huh? not or min or having minimum experience in it? Okay, uh, I actually have the answer in the next uh, page because basically it's a it's not a yes or no question. It's it depends. It depends on the business needs, right? So I'll I'll share that a little bit later. Uh, the framework. I think factors go into it. Yes, Alina. Uh, yeah. You you know about changing uh, jobs uh, from different industry. You know we. We definitely can do that. Determination is everything. Yeah, yeah. but uh, consider other other factors. <coughs> From later, uh, Zalina will <coughs> go in and talk a little bit about that. So, Mr. Choi, are you able to uh, join us? Uh, uh yes. Uh, oh yes, oh, wonderful. Okay. Go ahead. Wonderful to Morning. hear you. Morning, everyone. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Uh, yes. Uh, Loud uh, and clear. Yeah, I'll try about the imagination session just now. I'll okay. call it a dream. Share a, yep. a bit uh, what I imagine. So what I imagine in that session was I woke up in a nice house with, and then I saw my parents and my wife and children also and then uh, they are greeting me and hugging me and then as i travel to work i call this uh, imagination the dream uh, there are high-rise buildings and flying cars everywhere wow. finally i reach into the office apparently i own a company and a few staff. Wow. <laughs> they are greeting me and then following through the imagination, I finally met the my future self, which is uh, the boss of the company. And then I asked him the two questions. What did you do to achieve uh the status today and in the the second question is in achieving that what did you regret the most so after that i follow through the session and come back <laughs> well to, done uh, yeah <clears throat> wow i get goose goosebumps because it's it's really powerful Yes, uh, you know, I, I feel the same way as well. You know, I think uh, that that was a very successful uh, session that Mr. Chui actually has, and um, I think it it it's beneficial for him. 
um, he basically uh, i realized as well he uh, managed to ask questions and get the answers that is like uh, you know wow that's that's, that's mm. like that's the gift to yourself mr sri so wow okay mm. thank you thank you everyone yeah. thank you so much for mm. sharing i think that was really good wow I, and what else yeah, anyone, anyone else who, who wants to raise hands and, and you, you know, your, During your imagination, you can um, imagine anything. You know, like for myself, I was imagining myself at the top of a mountain overlooking large lakes, um, green um, area, green mountains and blue lakes and blue sky. Obviously, it's overseas, uh, but... <laughs> <laughs> but you know it's my imagination that is how i actually i can tell you imagination the the power of imagination is so important uh, for every and, one of us and and guess what you know what um what i find with all this uh visualizations i've done this for the last 20 years and and you are surprised that some of them actually happen yeah. So you are actually putting your intention uh, for those Muslims. You know, you're putting your niat out there, uh, and and you know, and let the let your the scientific part of it is that you are now anchoring your brain to look yeah. for that and to help you navigate that better. I mean, it's not just career, but it's also life, as what um as I mentioned. Okay. Yeah. I I agree that Zarina. It's like when when we achieve something, it's like uh a deja vu yeah. hey, i i think i've been here before i i i feel this before you know because yes. maybe for the past few years or don't know we 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 already imagine it in ourselves yes. right uh -huh. yeah so that was a glimpse of uh imagining the future i uh you can do a lot longer you can also be facilitated by uh, somebody or you can also do it yourself i find it a bit harder if i do it myself because you know, my brain sometimes just goes somewhere else <laughs> halfway through. <laughs> Please come back. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you, you, you need to do your job as a vice president <laughs> of the low carbon digest. Yeah. <laughs> no, I think I think what I can do in my capacity in this role is let's imagine a better future. What are the I solutions see. that we can deploy? I'm gonna do that. Okay, thanks for and, giving and, that. And that's the reason why my imagination of the green um, <laughs> you know, mountains <laughs> with blue large lakes and blue sky with no pollution. So oh, yeah. <laughs> sounds like Switzerland, but okay. Or, or, oh, or Norway, oh my maybe. God. <laughs> Did you just read my mind? <laughs> you see? Um, the Switzerland in <laughs> Switzerland in, in, in the summer, actually, because it's yeah, green. Yeah, yeah. It, it's summer. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, oh, thank you very much, Zarina, for that um, um session. Uh, I hope uh, you know some of you can actually join in and um you know share your thoughts as well. Yeah. I think it will be yeah. more beneficial if you do that. Uh, because the more that you speak of your um your your visualization, the more that you think about it, the greater the chances. That oh yeah, become actually early. that is so true. Thanks for highlighting that, and that is something that I've learned also. The more visible you share your future or your goal or your vision, um, actually increases your chance of success. Like I said, that's part of the topic today, and it's true. And the more you write it down, uh, you will surprise yourself at the end of the year that you actually achieve some of these things. So I highly 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 encourage you to even write it whatever that you see to whatever you've got today your takeaway your key takeaway what your what you feel um, what you saw um, write it down and the questions that you asked yourself or even the question that i asked um, in the session just now uh, what can i do more of and what do i need to let go it's very very powerful and I, I know sometimes it gets quite uh, sensitive and that's for yourself no problem you don't have to share but I, I just wanted to open this up more for people to share the key takeaways anything powerful because I think this is where we are right we are here together to learn uh, to learn with and even to share any insights that you have 
and also i think uh, it is also very um uh, you know helpful if you print it out and then just put it on the screen or change your um you know screen saver to become uh, to, to 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 the image that you want uh, for example <laughs> if you would if you want to go to switzerland then you have picture of switzerland over in in your desktop and every day that you see um, you know, there's increase in chances that you will go there one day. And I think for me, it has been the method that I use. So what I will do is I'll print out, um, you know, the pictures of it or, um, you know, if, if say, for example, I want to become a fellow member one day. So I will write myself, I um, you know, I are Abdul Razak Yaakob fellow member over there so one day it become a reality and that's wonderful we have some comments over here as well go ahead yeah, uh, how to read it uh we it. can go down here uh, i think have well, we covered Mazia, this Mazia. one oh Mazia, Mazia over here. and Patia, Mazia. yes okay we, we have some uh imagine myself from miss Mazia suraya Okay, she said that wake up uh, at my hometown, Putri Harbour, or oh, Johor, right? A bungalow nearby Marina. Wow. Office nearby there. I manage a unicorn business related to fintech, contributing to the nation. That's GDP. very powerful. Okay, good for you, Miss Mazia. And then we have Miss Fatia. Okay, go down a bit. Okay, I would imagine myself at the top position in managerial part or higher position in my career, despite just being an engineering lead or in technical part in general. I would like to know, okay, this is a question for you. I would like to know what is the best advice from you that would hmm. be a good tips to start, strategize to achieve this. Okay, okay. How, how, we, we need a tips. How how we going to navigate or how hmm. we want to strategize our our future to achieve this? Oh, okay, Back that's to very you. very yeah. Thanks thanks. Uh, this is a very very good question. Thanks, Fatia. Basically, um, if you want to go into managerial path, right? Uh, management path is really all about strategy and people. That one is Fatia, yeah. Uh, yeah the, Fatia. the the uh, yeah. is unicorn. Mazia yeah, is unicorn. Mazia is unicorn. Yeah. So okay, the question she has is the tips. Uh, strategy, you have to have a strategic thinking. Uh, so there are many ways to do that. Either you're exposed to different um, roles. Um, and most of them, I think you have to be familiarized. You have to familiarize yourself with the business. Uh, you can take a class. You can talk to the people in the industry. For me, it's a bit of both. Actually, three things, three things that I would do. Um, one is the exposure on the job exposure. If the job exposure is not there, uh, we can always. Um, okay, this is where the mentorship is important, right? So you can always also ask people from the other company if that that is uh, possible. But exposure is to me one of the key thing for to getting a strategic thinking. Second is um, uh, the class, the formal education. So. There's many classes there. You can talk about strategic thinking and how you um, prepare yourself for that. Uh, the third one, most people might not realize it, but um, if you volunteer, right, you get the chance. Uh, it's a safe example, volunteer for IEM, volunteer for all this. Uh, that is low risk. I would say low risk because if you fail phone, you're not going to flunk your business. Lah. Right, but it's about organizing things. How do you organize people around to achieve a goal? That is the key to management, really. Um, you get people together, be clear on your communication. What do you and how do you want the team to get where do you want the team to get to, and how do you want them to be? So, strategic thinking and people management is very, very important. And uh, for wherever you are, even 10 years experience, and if that's something that you're interested. Um, and there's a lot more also, um, on top of the things that I talk about, one thing that I will share later is also networking. Uh, networking gives you a different perspective, uh, not so much of just 
um, exchanging business card, but really uh, building the real relationship to others who are outside of your company or outside of your industry. And IEM is, I'm doing going to do a little bit marketing for IEM. It's one of the platforms where you can do that, right? Um, exactly, exactly right. <laughs> I would like to add that, Azalina, the volunteer, sure. volunteering part just now. Okay, for for start, uh, for starter, how about Miss Fatia or Miss Mazia join me at the <laughs> Women Engineer Session? I am. Uh, we have a lot of uh, event or something to organize that you can mix around, and then you can you can do something for yourself. You you can add value to yourself actually. Uh, plus the networking that we have. That's what. That's where I know Raza. That's where uh, we. <laughs> we, it's, we true. And, and, it's true. It's true, right? <laughs> because and, if you, kalau kita tunggu, if we have to wait for an opportunity to come, that might not happen. So uh, one really? thing I wanna, what I would really wanna share here, and impart to everyone, career. You are in charge of your career. The company and, is not in charge of your career. No anyone else. Okay. No one else care about you. It is Ayu, you. Ganasnya. Okay. It, it is you I'll, who, I'll basically, <laughs> who basically in charge of your career. If you fail in your career, that is just you. So basically take responsibility <laughs> of your career <laughs> where you want it to be. Because yeah, you know true. we are talking to the uh, vice president of the low ventures, low carbon ventures over here, and she has done it. She has done it, and uh, you, you know all of you over here can actually simulate all of that. This is a method that you know we 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 all can be successful, and uh, it is true. Uh, I am provide that platform at which. Um, you will be able to meet people, yeah. networking. I joined in uh, I am in 2013 and I think that was the best thing that I actually do. Um, later, uh, in, in the Sembang Chilex in UM over here, we will have a session called the Future of Engineering. I will be talking as well about IEM as well as about um, you know, what is the future like for engineers nowadays. So if you are not able to join us in UM, you can always get us in our YouTube channel, IEM YouTube channel, where you can actually have this talk as well. If you miss any part of it, you can uh, access it over at our YouTube channel. Back to you, Zalina. Thank you. Okay. So uh, maybe we go to the next one uh, and you get the gist of it. Uh, this is the start of your journey, I would say, uh, you know, by imagining your future and you own your career, right? Uh, let's see. Then there was a question just now. How do I get to certain position? I put here SVB. I know it's a tongue in the cheek because SVB now is crumbling as we speak, but <laughs> the Silicon Valley bang, okay, for those of you who don't know, but you see, you will remember this for the rest of your life, SVB. How do I position myself better? One is your S stands for skill sets. So skill sets is what we talked about just now. When you do your baselining, you know, and also the T-shaped model just now, right? Uh, you know what you have. You know what your experience are. And you then at least at the same time, um, you know what your gaps are. So this helps to frame um, that one box on the white Venn diagram. And then values. Values is not the value that I asked before to do, but this is more on what value do you bring to the table? What's your unique selling proposition? So if you think, uh, you know, you are just now somebody talk about uh, your strength is uh, entrepreneurship, right? Majah talk about entrepreneurship or uh, yeah, honesty was your uh, value or maybe that, that's, a, that's a separate one. But basic, uh, what do you bring to the table? I, for example, if somebody has been in um, a project and you're, you know, you are so good at do, executing project, so that is your the value that you bring to the table. Okay, and B is business needs. What does that organization need? So it, we are not living in a vacuum. So when we talk about oh. How can I position myself so that I can get the role, even though I don't have the minimum requirement? Uh, 
good. The first thing is you are aware that you might not meet the minimum requirement. Um, and then find out how you can meet it in a different way. Or sometimes it, if the organization sees um, you in a different light and say, oh, this person actually is good at doing this. Uh, we can help him or her to complement by giving them training after, after they come on board, and which actually a lot of organizations do. So um, understand, and this is where networking also is useful because you know what an industry need or what certain industry uh, will value more than the others, right? So you get all this informal intelligence uh, especially useful when you want to navigate for either new job or switching career. Uh, let me share a little bit of how I navigated at the different points of my life, if you recall. Um, the first one, we all, always say this, the first step is always the hardest. So when I moved from Exxon, which has always been comfortable for me, 11 years, I stayed there. and. Uh, I did all the exercises that I shared with you just now about imagining the future, understanding what's important to me. And when the opportunity came, um, you know, my friend asked whether I wanted to join Pemandu at the time. I think it was Pemandu. I'm not sure that it was MPRC. Maybe it was MPRC. I don't remember. It's one or another. Uh, I thought, huh, I somehow I knew deep in my heart I've always wanted to contribute to nation building. Like, I just knew. And that was the niat that I mentioned. And that has allowed me to see all these opportunities when they asked, I applied for it. And of course, I remember that. So that is the um, one time where I said, okay, I'm not going to get this job or like I will never take this job. But because uh, I felt that I have the skill set, right, um, in terms of uh, the strategic thinking, because my previous role in Exxon has enabled me to do that. I was a planner um, uh, for, for the company. So I, I knew how to do it. And, and I know my unique selling proposition was they were looking for somebody from uh, oil and gas. And that enabled me to get to, the, to that role. And from there, uh, that role, that door yeah, opens if another I may door. Check you uh, over there. Sure. Um, when you uh, left Exxon, did it, did you feel afraid to step out of the comfortable boundary? Of course. Exactly. That's exact feeling that I have. I think it is good that we brave ourselves and we basically step out of our comfortable boundary to be successful. Yeah, and and I think when you are afraid, okay, this is where um, the visualization is helpful because you imagine the better future. Once you get, you know, you you get yourself out of that comfort zone. Number one, but number two, right? Well, number two, I was so now I remember I remember it vividly because I remember thinking about what is important to me in the next five years, like. What is it that I really want to contribute? And I remember at that point, I said, I wanted to give impact. Impact was my value at that point. Lah. So just wanted to share that. Um, okay, so um, then after that, okay, after the first step, the rest are quite extra. Once you do one, you, you, it, the, the, there's a uh, saying about, you know, the first step is always the hardest. But once you've learned that, um, again, you will get push yourself to do a little bit harder, a little bit harder, a little bit harder, right? And so when when and uh, here's the thing for those of you mid, who are having midlife crisis, it's okay. I had midlife crisis in 2013, <laughs> and and uh, the at that point. Raza, if you your art question about whether I was scared, right? And I was so I was doing very well in oil and gas, and then I That's thought, okay. I and I asked myself, am I happy with my life? My answer was, I wasn't happy. I I wasn't happy, and it's you, a very <laughs> yeah. Go ahead. And I think uh, probably our listeners over here would need to understand as well uh, because I come from Exxon Mobil as well, uh, same as Zalina. Exxon Mobil is a company that is highly cultured 
it basically makes you, uh, you know, uh, you know, feel successful, feel great about being in a company. And I, I can I can tell you, uh, being in Exxon Mobil makes me proud to be in that company. And say, for example, if I were to go to US. You know, people see me in the US and they say, oh, Asian. And then the moment that they open up my um, passport and they saw ExxonMobil, suddenly their face actually changed and they say, wow, you are an engineer with ExxonMobil. It's like, you know, that was the how proud. And that is that what makes it really, really hard to leave ExxonMobil, right? But once you leave, you suddenly become a butterfly you feel the best you 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 become the best version of you am i right to say that zalina yeah i i think i i think you i think we are all we all owe it to ourselves right and that one of the things that made me feel that maybe that was my personal reflection um Raza, uh, when i was in exxon i felt you know as you rightly pointed out it's a highly cultured company and you felt proud of it but i asked myself do i want to be proud by association or do i want to feel good about myself because i am creating an impact and that was the answer that i got and i felt okay i i Right. It's very clear. So you made that decision clearly. And, and as, even as I pivoted into the education business, actually at one point when I had the midlife crisis, I actually thought, okay, I am not, not going back to oil and gas ever again. I'm just going to go into education. I'm going to do good. Um, I'm going to be a coach. And I did that actually. I At the end of uh, five years, I actually got myself a certified coach and I'm actually a certified coach. But what's interesting is I was willing to go and I said, what is important for me at this point of life? Oh, actually, I want to, um, I, I imagine that this is going to be a hard, um, a hard step to take because you're coming from an oil and gas and, and you go to something completely different. It's a new territory. I don't know anyone, but the only thing I know is the only, uh, this is where, I knew that, but I have my transferable skills. My transferable skills is I know strategy, right? And actually, I know the context of Malaysia, and I just so happened to have to be one of the Ivy League. And they were looking for Ivy Leagues um, in Malaysia. So they wanted to, to have somebody who knows the landscape, but also know what it takes to be an Ivy League school. So I said, oh, I have this. Oh, I have this. That's all right. And if it fails, okay, this is what I told myself. If it fails, I will go back to oil and gas um, after this because you know, I, I got my certification. Not knowing, a year after that, oil and gas, uh, oil price crashed. Okay? But don't be afraid. It, um, things happen. You just have to keep pivoting. But having clarity on these three um, buckets here is very, very important. It can ground you to, to navigate better because as we all navigate life, it gets very shaky. It's you know, it's uncertain, right? You no one can plan your future to the dot. And that's okay. As long as we know what uh what you want to feel at that point, uh when once you get there, uh how do you want to contribute to the society once you get there? That's enough. For me, that was enough for me. All right, any question from here? Guys, if you have any questions, this is a time yeah. that you can speak. You can unmute yourself. You can uh, put in the chat box. Yeah, uh, this is a sharing of experience as well as sharing of how do we want to get to the next stage of our career, our life over here. So please do share um, your uh, maybe yes. Z maybe Zalina can answer the question by Mr. Amrit just now. Oh, hmm. uh, question. Yeah, the question was: uh, Is it possible to change job despite? Yeah. Not, so I experience. Yeah. yeah. So I think it goes back to the business needs, right? Because um, you have to be clear. Sometimes some companies um put the minimum experience to filter out candidates, and yeah, I'm I'm trying to put it in a tangible way, lah. You really need to know what the role requires, what the uh, company needs. 
because paper is in my, all my experience uh, paper is one thing but what when what they see you as a candidate is what can this candidate bring to the table which is the exactly. skill set and usp okay yes and so I, I think all yourself, of this, yourself, right? mm. yeah, you need to position yourself, understanding what your strengths are, and you have to convince them that, you know, with your strength, you are able to actually contribute. But at the end of the day, you know, um, you know I have attended um, interviews at which um, I say, okay, this is how... I can bring benefits to your company. This is how I can bring values to your company. You, mm. you basically, you know, you, you see me, good looking guy and all that, but it's not all that, you know, what I, how do I want to prosper your company? What value yep. do I bring to the project that um, you want me to lead? You know? Yep. So yep. that's exactly it. Yeah. yeah. We, that's the language and, that you need to speak to, right? Exactly. And, and, and another thing I want to add, and it's okay if you know that you don't have it. So find a way to meet the requirement. For example, there's so many uh, courses out there that now are much cheaper than what it used to be. Uh, if that can help you, uh, part, and some courses actually have projects that will also strengthen your CV. By all means, do that and invest. Okay, that, that will be that my next sharing, lah, investing uh, about in yourself. Okay, so next sharing, I, I said next uh, talk at the point other young. No, 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 no. I not share. Oh, okay, cool. Today right. lesson ni. Ah, I not share. Panggil lagi, kezali <laughs> now for the next talk nanti. Ayah cikol lah ni, cikol sekali cikol lah. Okay. Kita ada session lagi, ada sembang chillax where we want ah, to talk about okay, the okay. um apa ni boardroom series. Ah, okay, so. I, okay. I want to share this. I've shared this across actually in many, many different sessions for those of you who have attended my session previously in other platform. Uh, sorry, I have to be a broken record, but I'll, I'll share this anyway. Um, and this is my personal uh, reflection, my personal lessons. Uh, you can take it if it works for you. Uh, you can also toss it if it doesn't work. Uh, and what I find for me in navigating all the different roles, um, I talk about volunteer just now. And on top of volunteer, um, also stretch assignments. Stretch assignments means that sometimes these are the hardest uh, project in the company that no one wants to do. Or it's like so leche that no one wants to do. Uh, I, when I was younger, not now, but when I was younger, I used to be very you know, gung-ho about it and I always volunteer myself to do all the things that people don't want to do. Basically, I'm the toilet cleaner, lah, okay? Uh, if there's shit to be cleaned, that will be me. And that's how I built my um, my reputation that, okay, if you want to get things done, you just give to Zalina, then it will get done. And I carried that along. Stretch assignments help. And, uh, and this is the thing that was quite hard. The second one is quite hard for me personally, right? Sometimes we all want to feel good about ourselves. I... Uh, I wasn't, I think at some point of my life, I wasn't honest about my strengths and weaknesses. I was afraid. It's not honest. It's like I was afraid to show my weakness. I was not prepared to do this hard work to recognize the strength and weakness at some And you know, I guess when you age, you don't care about all this anymore. And I realized actually I should, what I would have told my early 20s, Alina, it's all right. You know, it's okay to admit that you're not good at certain things, but at least you know you are not good at it and you take action or you don't even um, lie and say, I'm good at it. Okay, And at the same time, capitalize on the strength. Uh, if you're good at certain things, uh, you're good at project management, if you're good at uh, strategy or you're very good at getting people together or you're good at marketing or good at being making people happy, be it. It's okay. Take that time, uh, do that first hard step. Uh, I've already shared uh, some of the questions earlier. Uh, do it for yourself. Take some time, carve your time to, to learn more about yourself, right? And the third one, I again, uh, I shared just now, which is priorities. Be clear on priorities. And it's okay. At certain point of our life, 
if family is more important. At certain point of life, money is more important. At certain point of my life, um, maybe taking vacation is more important, like going to Switzerland. <laughs> so it's all right. And it's your life. And and as long as it fits within what you want it to be and you feel no regret. I think for me, it's more on, I, I don't want to feel regret at the end of my life and say, oh, I didn't do this, I didn't do that. So that's why I, I thought, okay, I have a, a government offer. I'll do it even though if that, what it means is quitting a comfortable job and a job that I know had already been prepared for me for management ladder. It was already very clear to me, the you know? So, so those are the things that's important and you make it clear because then we can decide without feeling guilty. There's like no, no what ifs whatsoever. Ah, and then and the next one, we'll talk about training, uh, talk about uh, upskilling yourself, reskilling yourself, invest in yourself. I am a believer in professional development and I, I have seen really, really high return in my own career. Uh, I've invested, I've actually paid a lot of money just to go for classes, for coaches. And for me, that's a gift to myself rather than buying Prada. I actually got myself a class. I know it sounds very dorky, but you know. And you are never too old to actually, um, you know, go and join classes or uh, classes forever. I, for one, just got my MBA. Ah, uh, I just got my MBA this year. Yeah, uh, no, last year or this year. Last year, <laughs> sorry, last year. At the end of last year, I just got my MBA. So you know, at, at any point in your life, even you're never too old to actually, you know, go and get whatever that you want. Yes, never too old because I also learned how to pay. Now I can pay. So I have to throw in some marketing here. And you know, if some of you know me as a, a an artist, um, okay, or a coach, that's that's okay too. <laughs> All right. And the last one is also important, uh, long-term relationship and networking. And this is not the surface superficial relationship. We're talking about building real relationship. You want to know people. You want to contribute. It's a two-way street. We're all humans. We want to feel heard. We want to feel that we matter. So, um, and we... You know, sometimes I hear from the young engineers that come to me and they say, oh, but what can I offer? I'm, you know, I, I only started in, in the industry. There's nothing to offer. I said, no, you, you know, the young generation has all this, you know, all the IT savvy that I probably don't know. And they taught me how to use all these different tools. A relationship to has to be symbiosis, where yes. you know both parties uh, gain something out of it. Yeah, and I wanted to promote as well in IEM. Uh, this is actually what we do, not networking. And when I joined IEM, I realized one thing. You know, whenever that you are in a company, you have friends, whatsoever, colleagues, work colleagues, whatsoever. But once you leave the company, you leave all your friends behind. You don't go, only some, but very, very few that you are in contact with. But in IEM, you basically become friends because this is you until after you retire, you still will be friends. And there are many, many older generations who basically are still friends <laughs> because they are in IEM and they contribute to, because we all have the same goal, which is contribute back to the society, contribute back to the engineering industry. Uh, so the common goal is very important. In yes, common goal. Yes. No, I, I, thank you so much for reflecting that, Razak, because common goal, common, common shared purpose, we call it shared purpose, and symbiosis is very, very important. So it's it's real. It's not because I want to get something from this person or I feel somebody's getting something from me. And I can tell you that if I know, if I sense and smell somebody is trying to get something from me, um, you're not going to get it from me. <laughs> right? And so put yourself in that shoes. And, and you know, when... So, for example, even this talk when I... You know, Wata has been... My mentor when I first joined the company. And when what he asked brought me, me into IEM. <laughs> so so when he 
when he asked me about this, I said, okay lah, I help you lah, Wata, since you know, when I joined, I mean, I don't know Razak, whether you know, but when I joined Exxon as first year in Kerteh, he was my mentor. And I said, okay lah, I give it to you lah, no problem. And, uh, and then when he shared with me, I said, it's on the weekend, Valin. I said, okay lah, I have to sacrifice my weekend, but I'll do it. I'll do it. Right? Thank I you. feel sorry for you, <laughs> but Wata <laughs> is one of my best friends and the one who actually brought me into IEM and introduced me to all of the people as well as all the organization in IEM. So uh, I guess we we basically have a common ground over here, common but ground. he is not a good, <laughs> good uh, you know, mentor to us. <laughs> So bad, like but I guess he is lah. I mean, you know. Are oh, you? you? Yeah. Yes, I guess. Oh, Abi no, Wata. He's not. He's, he's not in. <laughs> but, but I think on a serious note, right? Uh, and that's what it is. Uh, a relationship. Sometimes you, um, it's it's funny. I mean, we all human. We know that we all have experienced this. Uh, sometimes you haven't been talking to this person for ten years, and then the next thing you know, hey, I remember this because you had a good. Um, at least experience working with these people at some point of your life and you're like, okay, I'll give you back, lah, no problem. Uh, but there are sometimes you you're just like somebody burned the bridge so bad that you don't want to talk to this person ever again in your life. Uh, so uh, my advice to everyone out there, do not be that person. So that is my own takeaway. Um, and I hope that if you think it's useful in any question about this, I'm happy to take questions. Um, and I think... Um, this is we where I'm, I'm going to ask a few. Minutes. Zalina, if, uh, yeah? we do have 15 more minutes only yeah. because we need to stop at 11. So, yeah, um, yeah. Uh, let's uh, get as much as possible from you. Okay, okay. <laughs> we definitely so, have yeah. to uh, get you back over here. Uh, yeah, yeah. Okay, Yanni, uh, I'm not going to share it much, but it will be circulated. But these are the few things that have helped me in uh, navigating career. Uh, the one that is so powerful for me personally is this book. Uh, actually, two books. One is uh, Strength Finder. I was uh, recommended by um, one of my ex-bosses. And you actually do a test about to find your strength. And this one, What Color Is Your Parachute? Surprisingly, I took that. I actually um, <laughs> did all the test in that book i wrote it i have a one page summary of that exercises and this was before my move to hibiscus and a year later at that point i didn't know anything about hibiscus as in i know about hibiscus but i wasn't even intending to join hibiscus and a year later out of the blue i got a call and i'm like okay this is funny, but I did this exercise. It, it fit exactly what I wanted in every part of the exercise that I did. And it was an easy thing to say yes, because if I hadn't done that exercise, I would say no, because COO job, who on earth wants to do a COO job? Not me, lah, because I, I want my work-life integration a bit better. <laughs> but I took the job because I thought, okay, this is what I wrote and this is what I thought I can contribute. And specifically, I wrote that I want to be part of energy transition. Like I actually wrote it because I'm passionate about it. And uh, surprisingly, this year, I mean, last year when, when my MD and my board called me, they said, we have a job for you. Can you take it? Can you accept it? And I said, okay, sure, why not? And I said, the job is about energy transition. They said, okay, I'll do it. So that, that's something powerful that I want to share. Um, I hope that this can be circulated so that you can take a look at it. Uh, yes, I, I wrote, we will yeah. circulate the, the, the pack yeah? over here. But we have one question over here. Um, Patia wanted to know how about network mm. relationship in our own oh. organization itself? Mm. Ah, that one is also important, right? Okay, so what I was just good question because I was reading a Harvard, a Harvard article actually about um, when people go in a new role, the first 90 days is so important, right? Like, like for me, even for me, when I transition into this new role, it's so important. So it talks about the internal networks. For you to succeed in your job currently, you do need to understand who are who's who in the organization 
you need to know who are the champions you need to know who's going to be your supporters you need to know who's going to move the needle who has the ears of the boss you do and and the people call it politics and for me it's okay there's so much dirty word thrown on in the politics but use that positively rather than negatively some people want to shortcut don't do shortcut lah right uh, so maybe in a bit more professional setting look at it identify who are the influencers and who are the decision makers in your organization work with those individuals with work with those groups and sometimes surprisingly it can be peers and most of the time um it can it, it, most of that is usually across across the across the organization so uh, yes the short answer is yes the long answer is you need to look at and map your stakeholder it's called the stakeholder map and for those who as then mba you would know what stakeholder map is okay good question Thank you, Fatia. Thank you, Zalina, uh, for the um, un for answering the question. Um, and do you need uh, a lot of time for the mentimeter that we wanted to do? Um, I think we can take one one last question. Okay. Um, okay. Any questions uh, that um, you all have? Uh, while waiting for the questions, I think, uh, yes, it is important um, that we know people in the organization. And I, and I think as well, it is very important uh, to stay true to yourself um, and be honest with yourself as well as the people outside you because you know uh, you know probably people find me loud and annoying uh, but that's probably my weakness or my strength <laughs> i don't care about it but uh, i'm happy um you know contributing whatever that i can um to the industry as well as the uh, public out there so in that society out there so uh Please, uh, whatever that you do, uh, stay true to yourself as well as be happy doing it. Yeah, uh, life is too short uh, to to you know just not be happy at doing things. <laughs> <laughs> Anything to add, um, Rosita? Uh, I think the happiness is more important. You are happy with your life. You're happy with your works. You you love your jobs. Then everything will be happy. Then. You have a friends that make you happy. Uh, forget about the friends that that whatever. Yeah, oh, annoying friends. <laughs> <laughs> you can put it aside. Yeah, put it aside or kick them away. Yeah. You know. Yeah. I can I can I can I interject one thing though. Yes, go ahead. Like, so I was so um okay so on the term happy right I was so I actually wrote a uh one of the blogs there about have, being happy and. For me personally, I was so chasing happiness. Be careful with that also, because when you chase happiness, that's when you don't find happiness. And I find I I redefined it as being contented, being at peace. So I actually, because for the longest time I was like, I want to be happy, but then I'm not happy. I'm not happy. And I'm, so like it got to the point where I was like, okay, forget about it lah. Let me just redefine this, reframed it. So I actually put it as being contented, um, being blessed. So I actually found that I was... Actually, Dalina, you are so right. Um, we feel the same way as well. Concept mm -hmm. bersyukur. Betul. Bersyukur dengan apa you ada. You know, I probably don't earn as much right now as what I, uh, I did before, but I am contented with what I have right now and yep. I'm happy doing whatever that I have right now. Yep. So, you know, yeah. yeah. So Concept bersyukur that... is very important. Very, very, and for me, that was more powerful. And surprisingly, guess where I got it from? I was tengah, tengah bertawaf dekat, dekat Kaabah, you know, masa umrah. So, dia lihat selalu macam, ah. Suddenly, ah. you got that epiphany. Epiphany, I'm like, oh. Yeah. Ah. Anyway, so yeah. that is something that I, so now my, my I, I cleared up a little bit because such a, Exactly, right? because that, that is the moment where you, you, you get that, yeah. wow, you know. Epiphany, uh, right? Exactly, exactly, <laughs> yeah. exactly. Okay, so so let uh before I uh, like cry buckets here, uh can we uh, do a mentimeter to see what oh, yes. your uh, takeaway? 
Sekejap, okay, okay, let's okay. all do... Let, uh, let, yeah, let me share this. Boleh tak? Scan yeah, your... Yeah. Scan your ni and then your takeaway. Okay. Yeah. Let's uh, put in as much as possible another... Um, Ni jadi submit ya? Kejap lah, I kena... If anyone submit. Uh, you, you all... uh, okay, 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 sorry, sorry. Uh, I kena... Okay, this Open is where... Ah. Then we can know... I hope yeah. everyone has Please. already uh, scanned uh, the Mentimeter just now. Belum lah. Kejap, kejap, kejap. If you have not, uh, do tell... I so kena share balik. Can... I have to share balik lah. <laughs> I have to share balik. Kejap, sekejap. I ni IT kurang sikit. Okay, let me share ah, this first. <laughs> okay, let me share this another one. Um, Actually, ah. kalau I, I I take this, let me see on my lap, on the... Are you able to go to the Mentimeter or not? Yes, uh, we uh, we put in all the three words. Okay. How about the rest? Send me the result. Oh, ada, 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 ada. Okay, we wait for a while lah. Nanti I will, I can flash this because I just opened the website. Uh, for for those of you on Zoom, uh, you can see the PowerPoint only, right? For now? Not yet. Currently, you are not sharing anything. Yeah. I'm not sharing anything, is it? Okay, 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 okay. Okay, I... Let let me just flash this. Ah, uh, okay. Anybody, please scan the QR code. Yeah, so nanti they... boleh. So nanti and put the, the, the all three, uh, peto, uh, all three words, all three words. Ah, three words. Have. Yeah, you 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 request for the words. Oh, okay, okay, okay. The takeaway. The takeaway. Take take okay, okay, okay. I put one. Dia buat bagi tiga eh. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, ada tiga tak, kan? Tak ada tak apa lah. Buat lah apa-apa. Hmm. <laughs> I gave three. Oh, you did lah? <laughs> a lot I of takeaway. A lot of takeaway. Very good. I think okay. I think this is a really, really great session. Uh, because okay. um, Wait, other than learning about um, our speaker, uh, how the success um, for her and what uh, uh, secrets uh, to the success. and. Nampak? Yes, we are seeing ah. Yeah. Ah, finally. Say, this is okay. So, uh, disclaimer this is my first time setting up the Mentimeter myself. Ah, oh. okay. I this is not, nice. Okay, yeah. we, we can see over there actions. Yes, so you can so you can go. Okay, for those who hasn't gotten the uh, opportunity to write down, so you go to menti.com. Sorry, I put them Mentimeter, pula. menti.com, uh, and then you. Yeah. Uh, input the code for 97523952395 there you go now it's As you can oh, see over okay. there i i I'm, I'm glad to see someone actually say that write down write down your visualization and then put it somewhere or put it on your phone what i actually have done before Okay, before this, like when I was younger, I like kind of like sports car. So I put the sports car inside there every day. I look oh, at it. So I got that. Ya Allah. I've like, been there and that sold it off because I got fat. Oh, you sold it off already, is it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You cannot beat him in the sports car. Yeah, the other sports car. That's I, how I, I'm, I'm done with it. I'm done with all the material that's, stuff. That, that's what I remember Raza for. So, and and Klaka. I remember Raza for being Klaka, Raza. You haven't changed. <laughs> and okay. it, it's oh, good that uh, you know never too late and i think very very there. important okay. happiness yeah and happiness too so that means there's a lot more people actually that wrote happiness in there yes it will actually blow up <laughs> more people yeah more. I, I wrote happiness as well. Me so, <laughs> so I guess that's the reason why it keeps on uh visualization. I'm, I'm gonna take picture of this. This is so cool. 
Yeah, and then uh, and understanding yourself that is really really important, and um, as what Whitney Houston say, you know, uh, the greatest love of all is about you know learning to love yourself. Yeah, uh, so I have to uh, give contribute to uh, Whitney Houston, lah, kan? So <laughs> we have to ah, we have one how to be impactful. Okay, yeah, we have to we have to do, add value to ourselves so that we know how are we going to impact those surrounding us right? yes and also contented with life concept mm. bersyukur uh, that is very very important yeah um never too late yeah yes never never too late because uh, as you all as i mentioned i just got my mba <laughs> But never too late as well for the next step, which is a PhD. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. Come, come. Let's do it together. Yes. Wow. <laughs> I will do so, PhD one day, one day. One day, I think. I I think probably. I mean, like just for the fun of it. Why not? You know. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Oh, uh, by the way, we um actually we come to the end of our session. It's ten fifty nine right now. So take a picture, boleh tak? I gonna take a picture, not. Oh, okay. okay. Uh, take a picture with all of us at the point. Yeah lah. Uh, yeah. Um, probably you need to stop sharing so that uh, yeah. uh, we can probably uh, Suryani, uh, Kak Su, um can take a picture. Uh, as well as you need to probably unshare the screen and people can open up their. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. Camera. Oh, I see. As honey, how are you, honey? Okay. Can we have more people? Can we have uh, more people? Okay, Miss Fatia. Ah, Miss Fatia. I see Miss Fatia. Banyak soalan. Ah, uh, it is good. You know, you 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 know me right now. You can continue to, uh, you know, <laughs> continue to Corporate talk to us. Exactly. Yeah. You know, we really need uh, more people because, uh, yeah. not because we are getting older. But uh, we do need the younger generation to come in and join OGMTD as well as Women yeah. Engineers yeah. Sec uh, sec yeah. Section. Yeah. Uh, so that um, we have people, new ideas. That Those are the most important thing. Okay, back to you, Zalina. Thank you so much for joining us and for sharing um, your success and sharing the method on how you basically arrived there. And it's, um, I guess it is, uh, it, it has helped many uh, people over there, not just the women engineers, but also the rest of the engineers who would like to know, who would like to learn how this is done. Any last word, uh, Zalina, to all of us? You are muted. You are muted. Yeah. Kasu can take picture while we are doing that. I uh, you cannot unmute. Oh, um, um uh, Sureni, tolong unmute. Uh, let me see whether I can unmute you. Hola. Um, chat. Uh, no, not chat. Um, Sureni, uh, please unmute uh, Zalina. I didn't do that. Please do not say that. I, I, yeah. Okay, you are. Yeah. So, go ahead, Sudden, suddenly, I felt like I felt somebody just mute me. Is it because I've been talking for the last two hours? <laughs> like, this is how it feels okay. to not be able to talk. All right, so that's just such a <laughs> interesting. Okay, go ahead. Then. So, thank you so much for everyone. Uh, and I, I thought, should you know, I, I, I know a lot of you might not uh, share, but I know you all probably will share that for your own good. I mean, you, you keep it and write it for your own good. Thank you for today's participation on a weekend, two hours some more. Uh, so we'll take a picture very quickly. If you all not shy, then maybe for IEM's benefit, you can do your own promo. Huh? Yeah. Yes, stand by, stand by. Okay. One, two, three. Ada <laughs> the next page. Okay. Yeah, untuk next page. Okay. So kita tak ada next page tak ada picture so far. So first uh, ramai orang tak ramai orang uh, okay. tak nak tunjuk ke muka. Ramai orang ready. But it's okay. 
whoever uh, would like to join in uh, and uh, if you would uh, if you missed out any point uh, in this uh, session over here you can go over to our youtube there's a whole lot of other um other videos as well mm -hmm. uh Samang Chile videos and other videos that uh you know about talks uh we will put more and more talks uh in the future in our YouTube uh need subscribe to it and like it okay uh thank you so much Zalina for the session we end thank the session you thank you all for joining as well bye bye thank you so much bye bye, bye.